the story of Belinda Van Crevel. She's been dubbed Belinda Van Evil, and for good reason. You see, her life reads like a rap sheet of horror. She ordered the execution of her father. She nearly stabbed to death the man she loved. And then there's her brother, the serial killer. Now, after two stints in prison, Belinda is once again a free woman, trying to start over. Belinda Van Crevel. One of Australia's most notorious criminals is out and about. Just weeks after being released from maximum security jail. I like them. I don't mind Actually, them. yeah. So what are you enjoying most about being out? Meeting people. Yeah. Um, getting out, going shopping. So normal things. Yeah. You know, you've really got to appreciate life because anything can happen. And what has happened in Belinda Van Crevel's life is almost unbelievable. <laughs> A life defined by violence, abuse and murder. The question is whether at 34 she can finally turn it all around. You've been called Belinda Van Evil. Mm -hmm. Is that what you are? Are you evil? No, of course I'm not. Your brother's a serial killer, you had your father murdered and you almost stabbed your boyfriend to death. That's a pretty strong rap sheet, isn't it? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? To some it might be. To understand Belinda Van Crevel, the woman, you need to understand Belinda, the little girl. And in particular, her relationship with her older brother, Mark. A convicted murderer, he's the youngest person ever to be sent to Supermax, Australia's highest security prison. Tell me about Mark, your brother, the person you know. Uh. I love my brother. Mm. Is it tough talking about your brother? Very. I can see you getting upset about it. Yeah. Why is that? Because he's a good person. Do you think that's the image most people have of him? Oh, it doesn't bother me what other people think. Mm. I know my brother and I know he's a good person. Mark and Belinda grew up near Wollongong, south of Sydney. Raised by their father, Jack, after their mother walked out when Belinda was just two and Mark only three. For years, Jack was violent to his children and their hatred of him sits at the centre of the gruesome Van Crevel tale. What type of things would your father do to you? He'd beat me every day. I thought he would kill me. Every day I lived in fear, I thought oh, I was dead. He would end up killing me. He was a sadist, I believe. He got off on what he did and it wasn't gonna stop. And how was he towards your brother? Worse, the abuse was worse. Do you think that everything that's happened in your life that is bad stems from this abuse that you speak of? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I don't know, it's just the ultimate dysfunctional family. I'm just uh, horrified to see that how much evil can come out um, of this group. It reads like a horror story, doesn't it? It does. It does. It's your worst nightmare. These are the walls of the homicide squad. Detective Inspector Russell Oxford knows the Van Crevels better than anyone. It certainly was down in Wollongong. It was the, the biggest show in town. Back in 1998, he was a young detective investigating two sickening murders. 
a couple of weeks apart, both in Wollongong. The victims were 63-year-old David O'Hearn, a quiet shopkeeper, and Frank Arkell, former Lord Mayor of Wollongong, who was facing pedophile charges. I don't mind saying it, that the town was in fear, because in their midst they got a, a bloke who's brutally murdered two men. And you didn't know if or when he'd struck again. Exactly, exactly. Four months later, as police were closing in on 19-year-old Mark Van Crevel, to their surprise, he handed himself in and confessed to the grisly killings. Is there any reason why you did it? Why I killed David Owen? Yeah. Not really, no. I mean, I was angry that day, but no particular reason, no. Well, why did you go to his house? Just, um, I had in my mind that I wanted to kill someone that day. Bang, hit him on the head, and he slumped down there, and he slumped like that. This is Mark calmly talking Detective Oxford through his crime scenes. What was the purpose of washing the blood off his head? Oh, uh, I, I was going to um, keep his skull as a trophy, but then I uh, said stuff it. His mild manner seemed to defy Mark's thirst for violence. And how many times do you think you hit him? 40 plus times. More than 40 times. Your brother bashed Mr O'Hearn to death. He then mutilated his body. Mm -hmm. He even cut his head off as a trophy. Well, I don't think he kept it as a trophy. He cut his head off though, Belinda. Yeah. He used his victim's severed hand as a paintbrush yep. to write satanic writings on the wall. Yep. In blood. Yep. Does it scare you what your brother did? No, not at all. Mutilate. Why chop would off that a head, scare me? Sever a hand. It would scare most people. Well, that's okay. They're it not... scares me. Fair enough. Understandably, that's okay. But I can't understand that because I'm not seeing it from outside the picture. I'm his sister. Again, the reason behind that, why did you do that? I don't know, just why did I do the whole thing? I don't know. This is a book called The A to Z of Serial Killers. An encyclopedia of serial killers. Detective Oxford gained some insight into Mark's twisted mind through one of his most treasured possessions. Throughout the book you'll find his ramblings and his writings, but most bizarrely, is the opening page when he talks about who he's going to kill next, who's mm. going to be my next victim. Quite clearly, you can see his father's name there. Mm. Jack Van Crevel. And look, this is what blows my mind, Belinda Van Crevel, that she's on his list. Because she adores her brother. Yeah. I, I was actually taken aback by that too because I couldn't understand why he would do that. To find out that her brother wanted her dead. Yeah, it's chilling, isn't it? Mm. Belinda knew nothing about Mark's hit list. And she knew nothing of the bombshell Mark would drop at his trial. The claim that he was repeatedly raped by his father, Jack. While the jury didn't buy it, for Belinda, suddenly everything made sense. I know what happened. Why would a 19-year-old kid, boy, get up in front of the whole world and say that his father had raped him every day of his life if it's not true. So he can, what, make a fool of himself and embarrass himself. No 19-year-old boy's gonna say that. He was facing life in prison. His defence team had to come up with something to diminish his responsibility. No. no. Is it possible you've convinced yourself of this because you don't want to accept I don't need to that he's a psychopath? Myself. No, I don't need to that convince myself. That he's a serial myself. killer? No. I can understand why you want to believe him. He's your brother. It's not about understanding him to believe him. It happened. Mark was sent to Supermax, his papers stamped never to be released. He drove him to do what he did. He's the one that should be in jail, not my brother. Belinda blamed her father and was set on revenge. Why did you want your father dead? 
Why? Because of the damage he'd caused. So you blamed him for all the monstrous things that Mark did? Yep. Mark's innocent. Mark's the innocent one. He was the victim. Not David O'Hearn, not Frank Arkell, Mark. Did you ask Keith Schreiber to kill your father? Yes, I did. Keith Schreiber was Mark's best friend, captured here with Mark in police surveillance. Belinda was in a sexual relationship with Keith when she enlisted him for a special job. At the time, she was staying with her father at his Albion Park home near Wollongong. Why did you ask Keith to kill your dad? Because I had a daughter and I didn't want to do it myself for that reason. In the early hours of August 18, 2000, Keith Schreiber snuck into the Albion Park home through a window that had been left open. On his way, he grabbed an axe which was propped up against the garage door. His plan was to kill Jack Van Crevel as he slept. But the 48-year-old woke up and fought back. In the frenzied attack, he was struck 25 times with the axe and stabbed a further 16 times with a knife before Schreiber carved up the body. In the neighbouring bedroom, Belinda was under the doona with her four-year-old daughter. The little girl could hear the blows raining down and her grandfather pleading for his life. She said to her mum, what's happening to Poppy? Belinda covered her daughter's ears and waited. He deserved what he got. As far as I was concerned, there was no other way out. I was just happy that Jack wasn't alive anymore. Is there anything you can tell us about the incident that occurred last night with Mr Jack Van Crebel? I'm done it. Within 24 hours, police arrested Schreiber, who quickly buckled, convinced he'd rid the world of a dangerous pedophile. I told him this is for Mark, a pedophile bastard. You'll never molest another kid again. Keith certainly wasn't saying who prompted him to do it, but I think we all knew who it was. Belinda gave the order. Yeah. Well, Jamie Williams and Belinda Van Crevel. But when police hauled in Belinda, she played dumb. Had you never gone out with Keith, Shreve? Mm -hmm. No, I never even thought about it. Have <laughs> you ever had a, any relationships with him? Sexual-wise or any nature like that? Uh, I went into that. I don't think that's got anything to do with this. It's actually got a lot to do with it because it's investigating the murder of your father. Yeah, He's, but what's sex got to do with someone being murdered? We're just trying to... Did you use that relationship with Keith to manipulate him to commit murder? How can you manipulate someone to kill someone? He did this because he cared for you. On his behalf, it was an act of love. No, I don't think so. Oh, he did that because you told him you wanted Jack dead. Mm-hmm. And you don't feel bad for him? No, not at all. He didn't have to carry out my wishes. He chose to do that. What were you feeling when you were doing this? This was loneliness. I was feeling lonely. Keith Schreiber was sentenced to 16 years jail. Belinda copped six years for soliciting the murder of her father. You lost your daughter, your freedom. Was it worth it? Yes. You say that resolutely, without a doubt. Without a doubt, it was worth it. It was worth it because he deserved what he got. Your father deserved to die. Yep. Belinda Van Crevel served six years for soliciting the murder of her father, Jack. And on her release in 2007, she was determined to start again. You'd think she'd learnt her lesson. But for the woman nicknamed Belinda Van Evil, violence was about to strike again. Walking free 
a second chance. I just want to get on with my life. And soon after, Belinda Van Crevel fell in love with carpet salesman Marshall Gould. They had a little boy and it seemed Belinda could finally be happy, though not for long. I just remember her eyes, they just went black. Just went like that, it's just, you know, the colour of her eyes just disappeared. Just like that, it was just black. In July 2013, fuelled by a concoction of alcohol and prescription drugs, Belinda flew into a psychotic state, stabbing Marshall six times, almost fatally. She just started belting straight into me and you know, telling me she wanted to kill me. and. You know, I couldn't work out what was going on. And then she ran to the kitchen and she grabbed a knife and she came running out of the kitchen. She said, she just started with, I'm going to have to kill you, Jack, you know, like... She, Jack. Jack. The, the name of her father. The name of her father. When she first felt... Wayne Gould, Marshall's father, and rushed his stabbed and bleeding son to hospital. In the morning, I, I get a phone call. I, where's Marshall? And I said, Marshall's in hospital. What's he doing in hospital? She had no idea. No, not at all. I said, you tried to kill him last night. I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't. I said, you did, you stupid bitch. You tried to kill him. You stabbed him about ten times. Nearly lost his arm. So then she's in tears. She did not remember any of that. She remembered nothing. Does that scare you, that you've got no memory of that That night? did, yes, it did. I woke up in the morning and I was just horrified. I, I didn't know what had happened. I just woke up and I had my son with me and there was blood everywhere. Her frenzied attack may have shocked Belinda, but it didn't surprise Marshall's father, who was always concerned about the relationship. I say, like, Marshall, are you sure you want to be with this woman? You know, Belinda's a lovely girl, but she's cracked. She's in that case. Belinda was sentenced to two years for stabbing Marshall. Oh, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. How are you? Um, just one chai latte, warm with one sugar. One sugar? Yep, thank you. Okay. Thank you. A few weeks ago, she walked free once more, possibly her last chance. But there is one more evil piece of the Van Crevel puzzle for Belinda to learn about. After all she's done in the name of her brother Mark, she doesn't know about the secret scribbled in his most treasured possession. I've got this to show you. I, uh, I don't know if you've seen this. This is the book that the police found at Mark's house. Do you want to have a look at it? <laughs> the A to Z of serial killers. I'm just glad that you have something of his that I could... It's quite sad. Hmm. Have a look down that first column, at the names. There's a lot of names here, yeah. My name? Your name. Did you know you were on that list? No, I didn't. Not until now. Looking at that, he wanted you dead. He's just... This is just him being angry. So it doesn't bother you that your name's there? No, of course not. Because mm. when police contacted the other people on that list, they mm -hmm. were terrified. I would think that yeah, would well, be a more honest response. Yeah, well, they didn't grow up with him. I did. Mm. I know him better than anyone else. Despite his murderous messages, Belinda remains fiercely loyal to her beloved brother and hopes the Van Crevel demons are finally fading behind her. Detective Russell Oxford hopes she's right. Have you ever met a family like them? No, no. I've never worked on a case where there's had so many tentacles to it from the one origin. This is a horror story that's just kept unfolding and unfolding. I hope the, the chapter's closed, the book's closed now. So what's important 
in life now for you? To get on with life, move on. Um, yeah, let the past go. Do you think you've dealt with it? What no, not, not completely, no. It'll take a long time. Can people feel safe with you out in the community again? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Why? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> of course they can. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.